Hello everyone, welcome to the session of regression analysis. In the previous session, we have discussed simple linear regression and different measures of goodness of fit. Today, we will extend the concept of simple linear regression to multiple linear regression. In the previous session, we discussed the steps of simple linear regression and how to estimate the coefficients of least square and also we have discussed different measures of goodness of fit like r square, standard error, prediction interval, etc. So, let us see what we have done as a simple linear regression. Today, what we are going to discuss that is called multiple regression. This is just extension of simple linear regression, but basic the fundamental concepts will remain same. So, here if you have a data set say x variable and say y variable, dependent variable and independent variable and based on the sample data, you can fit the regression like say y equals to alpha plus you know beta x or a plus b x. So, then you can calculate the regression coefficient through least square method we have discussed in the previous session and also the intercept. So, intercept and the slope say you know slope that we have ca calculated in the previous session and then we have fitted the line. So, this is what simple linear regression and then different measures of goodness of fit we have calculated which are very important in regression analysis like coefficient of determination or the r square which is nothing but the square of correlation coefficient also or it is actually like you know as far as, as far as technical understanding are concerned the r square is nothing but the explained variation by the total variation. That means in the data how many data are falling on the line that is your explained variation and those all total all points and the distance are coming out to be a you know if you put together you will be able to calculate the total variation. We have discussed in the previous session and this is nothing but SSR by SST and this is what the R square value. R square generally range from you know 0 to 1 because R coefficient correlation coefficient can be minus 1 to plus 1 in case the relationship are like this it can be minus 1 so. But once you take the square it is actually the 0 to 1. So, higher the R square value better the regression strength or the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. We have also discussed the standard error. A standard error is nothing but the variation of the data from your predicted value. So, how much is the variation you can expect in the future that is standard error that also helps you in making a prediction interval or confidence interval of your data. We have discussed detail of it. You just you can refer to the previous session of regression and the measures of goodness of fit. You will get to know the detail insights of this. To also one more part let me discuss that also like the difference between the major r square and the standard error. r square actually based on the past data r square helps to define your strength of relationship between the independent variable and dependent. How it is explaining the independent variable is explaining the dependent variable that is being defined by r square based on the past data. Okay, so, the based on past historical data you are seeing the strength between the uh, dependent variable and independent variable. But in standard error actually you get the future confidence that means of you, once you establish the regression graph or you know say you know uh, trend line and after that if you have new data sets and if you get a predicted value say with some input data for independent variable or explanatory variable in that case whatever the output you get that is the ex estimated value right. But that standard error and the prediction interval these two combination gives you the confidence that your predicted value will fall inside this band line or inside the range or the confidence interval maybe 68 percent, 95 percent, 99 percent all this we have discussed in the previous session. So, this is what the summary of the previous two session that we have discussed on regression analysis. Now, let us enter into the multiple regression. Also, also one more part that if you have a look at remember this examples we have illustrated for uh, simple linear regression and we have fitted the line say like this is the line say with this intercept and slope and then this is the r square value and this is the adjusted r square value and the standard error observation and the overall f test value and the corresponding p value we also found less than 0 0.05. So, the overall regression is also significant and individual level since it is in one single variable no need to thought, think much about that, but still if you see the you know overall individual level variable also says that p is you know uh, less than 0 0.05 for the corresponding t test and you can say that the you know regression analysis has been well established with good r square and the corresponding you know standard error is this and the corresponding forecast is for 10 new sales persons your forecast will be like this. This is what the illustration part also in excel we have done it. 
now let's enter into the regression like multiple regression remember simple linear regressions we have discussed the basic assumption like linearity among the variables right there will be linear relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable the independent the observations will be independent to each other as well as the errors will be normally distributed right we have discussed same we have also discussed that equal variance or homoelasticity that means the variations of the error or the you know distribution of the y data sets output data sets will be to some extent equal or in a range for a given data set of x so it, there will be no much to not too much of you know variation in y values for a given x values so the variations are in limit so therefore the variations of the error is also constant so therefore since the constant or equal variance we are considering this is called the basic assumptions of homoelasticity or homogeneity of regression assumption this also help this also same for multiple regression also all four now one more assumption are required for multiple regression that is called multicollinearity the independent variable should not have any relationship among each other they should be independent at much as possible if there are little multicollinearity or you know correlation between them we can accept and fit the regression line multiple regression line but if there is a high correlation between the independent variable he cannot accept that relationship or that causal relationship or re regression he have to reduce the multicollinearity there is a logic there is a concept like you know there is a method to discuss the multicollinearity we'll we'll take a separate session and discuss the multicollinearity and other miscellaneous activities of regression analysis but for the time being this is another assumptions that there will be no multicollinearity among the independent variables so these are the major five assumptions for multiple linear regression also now keep this five assumptions in your mind let us enter into the multiple regression so in simple regression what we have done y equals to a plus a bx right simple one variable independent variable and one dependent variable and we have fitted the line now suppose you have a more than one independent variable look at here one two n say and this is the general forecast or regression line or the trend line of your uh, multiple regressions where these are nothing but least square coefficients so here you have to you know calculate the series of equations through least square method partial derivatives and if you make them uh, equal to zero and rearrange the data sets you will and solve them the system of equations you will get this coefficients of re multiple regressions so once you get that coefficient values in terms of based on the data sets you can fit your regression line so this is what look at a is the same as it intersect uh, part and but remember in two dimensions you can understand the line right you can understand the line because of the data you can see the relationship and this part is a as i mentioned and you know this part is b say you know among the data set the slope part so this is what your simple linear regression but when it comes to the and you can imagine the graph here right you can imagine the graph here but when it comes to the multiple regressions up to two variable you can think about that 3d function when you have n variable independent variable then it becomes some to some extent n dimensional graph or n dimensional picture so in that case it will be called as a the y function will be called as a hyperplane because you have many independent variable and in that case it is to some extent n dimensional diagram which you cannot imagine only theoretically you cannot imagine only theoretically you have to uh, understand and the carry forward the discussion or the calculation process so this is overall it, it's nothing but a hyperplane remember it now similarly this coefficients you can also calculate using the least square and the other independent variable the other data uh, this is the predicted value of the dependent variable so as it is using least square you can do it which is nothing but extension of simple linear regression we are not going to focus on the calculations of regression coefficient same as previous session only we would like to see the application and the illustration in excel so now suppose you have a data set now with numerical examples let us understand the multiple regression concept suppose you have two independent variables x1 and x2 that means and one dependent variable is salary so age is one independent variable and experience is another independent variable and you have captured the instances of combination of say x1 x2 x1 x2 and y1 set one data sets you have captured that all these instances in the past or based on the past samples so these samples will help you to create a relationship between the independent variable x1 x2 and y in that case your output that salary will be dependent on two variable not only one variable now age the person's age and experience suppose if you have this sample data set and if you fit the multiple regression like this say a plus say you know b1 x1 
plus b2 x2 say the error term will be there we are not focusing on that suppose this regression line if you fit this is called the multiple regressions and this is your you know estimated predicted value and these are your correlate like you know multiple co regression coefficient so you have to calculate that using list square you can do it but we will go to excel and we will see the values of a b b1 and b2 this coefficients as well as the what is the best fitted line of these data sets look at here the salary is dependent on age and experience so suppose both will explain the dependent variable not only age or the experience will explain the salary but effectively both will explain the salary so how much correlation coefficient or say you know coefficient of determination you are getting because earlier you had only one variable now you have a two independent variable and in that case this multiple regressions will define the impact the explained relationship between dependent variable and two independent variable now so that r square is a combination of both the variables let's see how it works and we will study that for this a given data set say you know for a given say x say 40 uh, x say 40 and say y say 14 years so in that case what would be your y value y value so that we are going to study right let's see using excel so here we have come to the excel now and if you see the data set i believe it is visible let me increase the font size so if you see the data set here so we have taken the independent variable age and experience to independent variable and salary is the dependent variable. So how to fit it? We know this process because we yesterday in the last session we have done it. Look at here. Once you install the data tool pack, you go to regression, go to data and the regression and the data tool pack, select regression, click OK, you will get this data set. So let me rerun it for your look at the salary data I have kept here sub salary as dependent variable and x input are two variable now so I will select both the column now both age and experience as two independent variable there is a label because age is the first row we are considering so click label and the output cell you have to select some cell so here already we have output cell I have made a color to save the time so let me put here say say same result will come so we can see the predicted or summary output of your multiple regression same as it is the previous one now if you see here look at the age intercept will be as it is look at the age and experience slope so these are the two independent variable and the corresponding you know slope we found that means the coefficients of the independent or explanatory variables this is like 99 and 2162 and also if you see the r square value here look at 97 percent quite good very good right so the the r square is very good of your regression and adjusted r square is nothing but same as i mentioned in the last session that it is nothing but people actually prefer adjusted r square because you know if you increase the sample size or say more independent variable the system the overall process penalize the relationship because it is penalizing the relations because you are adding more data and as well as also to some extent you know suppose if you add more independent rules that entire simulations are been done sensitivity are been done by the software and they have come up with the, if you do more as the adjustment what if analysis or sensitive analysis with the data with more independent variable or similar type of data or say you know more sample size etc you might get a better r square but here actually you know system penalize your r square value and adjusted r square value will be always either same or less than actual r square so this r square adjusted r square is more reliable most having more strength than r square one of them you can select as per your decision making process suppose here we are considering r or say adjusted r square standard error as it is i talked about the standard error the deviation from your expected prediction and the gap right upside and downsides if you add that one sigma that means 68 percent two sigma means you know 95 percent this way you can do it but if the sample size is above 25 over 30 then only you can take that one sigma to one standard is standard error two standard error but if the sample size are less say 5 10 10 12 20 15 sample size in that case you cannot just directly calculate the standard error or the predicted interval by one sigma two sigma you have to go back to the standard normal table and from there you have to select the t value and the corresponding you know calculations that also we have discussed in the simple linear regression session so now this is these are the you know measure of uh, goodness of fit whether whether your model is really good or bad that says from here 
now come to the you know the overall anomaly analysis and the regression coefficient analysis so rather than studying this we can come here because i have put a color of all this it will be easier for us to get a output now if you see the prediction first of all let us see the prediction so what will be the prediction the predict for a given value of 40 and 14 as the work experience and 40 as the age what could be the prediction let me rewrite here again the prediction would be which i have already written in the ppt but here you can see it is nothing but intercept a plus b1 say slope of h multiplied by input of new input of h plus sorry plus slope of experience the coefficient of experience like b2 multiplied by the input of experience you will get the y hat or the forecasted new forecast estimated value or forecasted predicted value of salary so this is what your regression outcome now let's see we have discussed the r square the standard error adjusted r square as well as the look at the overall observations we have 20 samples of overall observation and if you look at the overall anova uh, table this is nothing but actually let me use the pen this is nothing but actually you know your it says the overall strength of your regression here if you read that the ANOVA table it is nothing but the degree of freedom you have you know total two independent variables so it is coming out to be the two degree of freedom and the residual will be k like you know n minus k minus 1 from there you will find you know 17 as the residual number of residuals and if you see the total degree of freedom it is coming out to be 19 and then uh, total square sum of square error and that and then you know that for the regression you will find this and for the residuals data you will find this and the overall yield total sum it will be like that and mean of square error will be like this too and if you take the division of that you will get the f value look at f is 366 which is quite good higher the f better the you know regression the causal relationship that you have established lower the f like if it is less than 2.5 or something 2.9 2.5 or less than 2 we say that there is no much strong relationship between that so this signifies the f test of the overall regression analysis whether it's single simple linear regression or multiple linear regressions and once you can get the f the ratio between the mean square error of the regression line and the residual data this value you will get the corresponding p value this let me you know make it with bigger clear outcome so look at the significant value this is the p right p of overall you know test f test and here you will find that overall anomaly analysis. and here you see that it is like e to the power minus 14 so it is nothing but you know less than 0 0.05 so you can accept the overall regression the overall regression is established i'll discuss more information about it and after that you come to the individual variable overall regressions are been okay now now that means you can build a relationship i'll come to that later with hypothesis testing and then come to the next level so individual level if you see the p value of like intercept you don't need to see that first first row look at these two row age and experience and here you can see the overall standard error for them of the coefficients as well as you know you can see the t value t test and the p value look at here this is also you know less than 0 0.05 less than 0 0.05 and this is also e to the power minus 14 means it is also less than 0 0.05 so both the variable age and x age and experience are explaining the dependent variable quite effectively so you can say that both has both are significant both the variables are significant so now let's see how the overall you know uh, ANOVA table or the overall F test saying significant about the good strength of your regression. How you can develop that? That you can you know set like this. Let me you know delete this. We'll get to know. Suppose if you if you develop a hypothesis, say if you develop your null hypothesis, say you know for overall test F test and the corresponding you know and of a table understanding whether there is a really relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable or not or you need to re fit the regression line or not that establishment you can do by developing a hypothesis suppose your null hypothesis you are assuming that all beta all suppose here you have two variables say say b1 equals to b2 equals to 0 say so there is no relationship null hypothesis you are assuming that coefficient these coefficients are not there that means there is no strength between the like this is what this is what your b1 b2 so these are zero you are assuming initially and your null hy alternative hypothesis is that at least at least one b sorry at least one bi should be not equals to zero so these are the two hypotheses you have set now you throw f test you calculate your p value 
how much you found through this after analysis that table has given to us the regression table has given to us it is less than look, look at 1 point something e to the power minus 14 that means it is very less than 0 0.05 so since it is less than 0 0.05 this value less than 0 0.05 we can conclude that that null hypothesis is rejected and there is at least one b the coefficient the regression coefficient which is not equals to 0 eventually here we found both are non zero right so therefore you can say that conclude that from the nfl table and the overall f test that the regression is significant so you can fit a regression line so this is the first understanding of overall test now let's come to the individual variable level initially you found that there is at least one of the you know coefficient are non zero the slope are non zero so that you have established right say because your p value of overall test is less than you know which is very less than 0 0.05 this which is less than you know 0.05 so you can say that there is a relationship now come to the individual variable level because all variables may not be linked to the output variable so there might be only couple of we will have to check that individual level also so now if you come here you do the similar test but here you have to do t test because you know it is in the single variables and the sample data are all are normally distributed say you know data like you know coefficients your y output as well as the sample data so therefore we will be considering simple t test for individual variable level so in that case suppose for one each variable so for, for age or say experience whatever you want in that case your hypothesis will be say b1 equals to 0 and alternative will be b1 not equals to 0 and you check your p value how much is p value look at this p value 0.0209 which is less than 0 0.05 you accept your alternative and reject your null hypothesis so age is also accepted now you come to experience experience in that case also you propose your hypothesis suppose b2 equals to 0 and alternative will be b b2 not equals to 0 because in the overall it is at least because there will be many variables but here one one individually you are testing so in that case here also p if you check your p this is very less right 0 0.00 so 0 0.0003 something which is less than 0 0.05 so you can also say that null hypothesis is rejected alternative is accepted so that means that both the variable are explaining the dependent variable and here you can see the confidence interval for them also like 95 percent confidence interval for your data information etc and overall p are quite significant so the final summary is that there is a relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable from ANOVA table we found for overall F test and for the individual level T test we conclude that there is a relationship between age and salary and experience and salary and we have fitted the line. This is for multiple regression.